Welcome to the beginning of chapter two. Now, in today's lesson, we're gonna be discussing the why of programming by reviewing mnemonics and having discussions that relate to the following topics. The first one will be, generally speaking, what is an operator and operators. Then we're gonna talk about what the arithmetic operators are. We're talking about groupings of operators now. We're gonna talk about the comparison or sometimes known as relational operators. Then we'll talk about assignment operators. What are assignment operators? What are identity operators? And more specifically, the is statement that we'll be seeing a lot of. Then we'll talk about membership operators, which are the programmatic way to ask if a variable is a member of some kind of group, one of our group types from the previous section. And then our final group will be logical operators. So remember, it's not dangerous to wake a sleepwalker. If it happens, just wake them up. So our first mnemonic is gonna be a surgeon who's inside of an operating room. And the reason I chose this as our first mnemonic to represent the topic of operations in general is because a doctor's operation is a specific action that changes the patient in a specific way. Now, in a similar manner, we can think of a Python operator as something that takes a specific action that will change a variable in a specific way. So what is an operator? Well, an operator is any symbol that represents an action. And there's a lot of specific operators, so we're not gonna try to cover them all, but we'll cover just the big groups in this video, and I'll show you some of the most common examples in the next video. Our next mnemonic is gonna be sheep jumping over a fence. And the reason I chose this as the mnemonic for the arithmetic operators is because that's the most simple arithmetic operation I can imagine. Plus, sheep, plus sheep, plus sheep. Each time they're jumping over the fence, we're just adding them together over and over and over and over and over. <sighs> so what's an arithmetic operator? Well, they're the same operations that you learned in elementary and high school math. They're addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, the ones that we're most familiar with and that are most common. They also follow a traditional order of operations inside of Python, just like they do in your math classes. And that'll be important when you're trying to construct certain types of algorithms or equations later on to remember that we're gonna follow those orders of operations. Our next mnemonic is the disgusting, tiny, but can get really big tick. Now the reason I chose this for the comparison operator is because if you look at a tick, as gross as that is, the little teeny tick that's already so small, when it sucks blood, it becomes like a giant, like grape size, gross thing full of blood. So you can't shake the thought and that's the point of mnemonics. So we're gonna use them as our comparison operator because you can compare a tick with blood and without blood and they are very different and it's something you won't forget. No matter how hard you try, trust me, I've tried. So what is a comparison operator? Well, these are the operators that sit between two values and determine what type of relationship the two values have. So they're also called relational operators sometimes. And one special caveat of this group is that there is the double equals operator, the equality operator. And it's a question that we're asking between two variables on whether or not they are equal. And if they return true, it means that the values on both sides are equal, like 10 on one side, 10 on the other. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're the exact same variable. They're not pointing to the same location in memory. They don't necessarily have to have the same ID. We're gonna learn about a different operator that's gonna tell us about that. But, but the double equal sign is just one of those things that trips up a lot of beginners because it looks a lot like the assignment operator. Now our next mnemonic perfectly plays into this because it is a dog eating a homework assignment, which represents our assignment operators. Now, these assignment operators, like we just talked about, are ones that assign reason to something. And the reason I chose the dog eating the homework is because if you think about that process, in the same way that a teacher tells a student their homework assignment, we can tell our computer what value to assign a variable. So remember, a single equal sign actually assigns something. It like puts the liquor inside of the shot glass. Whereas this double equals is saying, is it equal to? It's acting like a normal equal sign would inside of a math class. So just a little bit backwards there, but remember double equal sign is like the traditional equal sign in math. The single equal sign is the assignment operator that we've started getting familiar with in chapter one. 
So our next mnemonic is going to be an ID card, an identification card, and it's going to represent our identity operators. And the reason is, is because in the same way that you show your ID to someone, and what they're doing is comparing your ID's picture to your real face to make sure you are exactly who you say you are, the operators do the same thing. They check the identity of an operator. Now the identity operator of is, which is actually is in, in like English syntax, we would actually write that in the Python code, it's going to return true only when two variables point to the same object in memory. So this is as opposed to the equality operator that just looked for equal values, like the number 10 or the number 12. If, if those two values are the same, it's okay. The IS, the actual identity operator, is actually asking, do these point to the same locations in memory? Our next mnemonic is a Merrill Lynch gang member with a face tattoo. And the reason I chose this mnemonic to represent the membership operators is because the concept of a face tattoo in a gang member, it's to tell people that they belong to the gang in some way. And the same way you can think of that in real life, a membership operator can tell us if a variable in Python is a member of one of the group types. So the membership operator is a great way to test one of our variables to see if it belongs as a member to any of our group types, so lists, dictionaries, strings, tuples, and there's even more that we haven't covered. So any of those kind of group types that can have members inside of them, they can be tested using the membership operators. And our final mnemonic is Spock from Star Trek, and he's holding a polygraph lie detector. And the reason I chose this for our mnemonic is because he's the very definition of a logical person, and these are our logical operators that we're talking about. And the reason he's holding the lie detector is because the way we work with logical operators is with basic truth statements. So what are the logical operators? Well, they test basic truth statements. And you can think about them in English with the words like and, and the words like or. It's so like, for example, this statement would be false. There's a prize behind door number one and door number two. But this statement is true. There is a prize behind door number one or door number two. So it's the way that we would work in English with and or or. And there's also something called an exclusive or, which we'll cover. But and and or for right now would be the best way to think about it. Where we're making a decision between a couple choices or both the choices together. Things like that. Very logical, very left or right, very one or zero. Those kind of things will be how we should think about the logical operators. Okay, so let's end this lesson with a quick summary of the mnemonics that we just learned and the concepts that they represent. So first off, we learned about a doctor who is performing an operation to represent the operators. And we said that those are any symbol that can represent an action, anything that can be a verb, something that can be done to a variable. Then we learned about jumping sheep that are going over the fence and how they're the arithmetic operator mnemonic. And the arithmetic operators are the same ones that you learned in high school math and you can find on a basic calculator and that they also follow the traditional order of operations. Then we learn the mnemonic of a tick for the comparison or relational operators. And these are the operators that compare values on either side of them and then decide on the relationship. We also focused in on the equality operator, which is part of that group, the double equal sign and how that's actually asking what a normal equal sign would in math. By our next mnemonic, a dog eating a homework assignment, the assignment operators and how we can use those to actually insert new types, new values into a variable. And then we talked about our identity operators and we use the mnemonic of an ID card. And these are the operators that compare something in memory to see if they're both in the same location or not. Then we learned about the Merrill Lynch gang member with the face tattoo, and that was the membership operators. We talked about how membership operators test for membership. So we have groups like lists and dictionaries and tuples and strings, and we can test to see if a letter or a number belongs in that group or not. And then we ended with Spock holding a lie detector, and he represented logical operators, which were operators that tested for basic truth statements. So we used, for example, some of the words in English of or and and so that or this that and this so now let's pull up our trusty jupiter notebook and start looking at some of these examples and ideas expressed in code subscribe to our mnemonic academy youtube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations